Hey everybody, my name is Steve and welcome back to the Back Shop Electric. I'm really excited to have you here to tell you about my latest project, turning some more car seats into office chairs. And this time, I got a little buddy here. Oh baby, look at that. That is a Model 3 seat that I turned into office chairs. And actually the one I'm sitting in right now is a Model 3 seat. So I'm gonna take you through this project, gonna show you how I do it, parts, diagrams, all that stuff. There's a lot of content in the video description below, so make sure you check that out. And it's a lot of fun, it's a super comfy chair. Actually, it's much more comfy than the first gen Model S seats. It's a little bit more technical, but honestly, if you've got a drill and some methods to cut metal, it's actually not that bad. Now, before we get into the build, you need to know that you gotta have a couple things, and you're gonna need some basic tools, wire cutters, you're gonna need uh, to be able to cut metal, um, and uh, drill some holes in metal, and you're also gonna need a battery so you can adjust the seat after you get it set up on the seat base. So the parts that I got building this seat are much very similar to what we did for the Model S, which is you've got your, starting from the bottom up again, your rollerblade wheels so it moves around pretty easy on a kind of rough terrain that I've got out here in the shop. I've got a plastic wheel base, and I chose a plastic wheel base. I got a little bit of heat last time for choosing plastic over metal, but the reason I like plastic is not because of strength, because it's the way they've designed it is actually pretty similar to a metal base, but it's much quieter. The metal base that I did choose, which was aluminum, uh, had a clingity clangity type sound. It was really annoying and I didn't like it. So I ended up converting that one to plastic anyway. Uh, then we've got the short cylinder. It's really important you get the shortest one you can get because the seat cushion height is really high and if you want the seat to be comfortable, the seat needs to be super flat and super low so lots of different people can sit on it. And the last part that we got was the reclining seat base and some metal and hardware, which I'm gonna show you here. Uh, all the metal and hardware I got from Lowe's or Home Depot, depending on what, so there's nothing really crazy here. One of the important parts though that's significant in this build that you have to have is 10 by 1.0 metric nuts. Now, these nuts are used to attach a certain bolt on the bottom of the seat that you will reuse after you remove it. So you gotta make sure you get those, you need four of them. Uh, metric, 10 by 1.0 fine thread. You can find them at just about any hardware store, but you gotta look for them because they're in the metric session. But before we get started, I do wanna give a shout out to my boy Justin over at evorigins.com. It's his website where he sells EV apparel. And he just got on with the guys from Electrify Garage, so I'm really excited him for that. And he does sell the apparel like this shirt. I got that over there. So go over to evorigins.com and check it out. So we're gonna tilt this sucker over and see what's underneath the hood. Actually, it's not the hood, but we'll see what's underneath the seat. On the bottom of the seat, you can clearly see three motors. One, two, and three. This is the fore and aft rail adjustment that uh, makes the seat move forward and back. We don't need that. That will be removed for this video. on the Model 3 seats is a lot longer than what you would expect. This sucker goes for days. It's about four feet long and we need to cut it down, but we don't need all this wire. Now you can't just go ahead and cut it right here because there are wires inside of this bundle that you need to get out to adjust the motors that allow the reclining of the back and the vertical adjustment of the seat. Because if you cut this, you won't be able to adjust those parts of the seat. So it's really important you don't cut this, 
just cut it off. We need to open it up and get to the wires that we need and then you can cut it off. Don't need that. And this panel right here will give us a place to hide the extra cables that we've got left over that we don't need. But some of these are safe to cut, so these are okay. Like this is just one wire. I don't know what it is, but I know I don't need it. I know I need to keep these wires right here. This is the up and down adjustment. I need this motor to work. And I'm, remember, I'm trying to get rid of all the extra junk underneath here because it's super important to remember that for the seat base, when the seat base gets installed in here, it needs to be flat up against here. So I wanna get rid of all this junk that we don't need. Okay, now in here is a black wire and a yellow wire that I wanna to get to. And I'm pretty sure that there's airbag lines in here. So I'm gonna be very careful about this when I cut it because I wanna get rid of all this. See all this mess? We don't, we, don't, we don't need any of this stuff, so we're gonna get rid of it. You can tell that you've got the right wires because the, the wires we're looking for are a yellow and black twisted pair. Green and white wire twisted pair. You see how they're wrapped around each other? So I'm gonna cut this out of here. Now for, in terms of making this into a seat, the rest of this stuff is junk and we don't need it. So I'm gonna start cutting wires. Now a word of caution here, I would cut one wire at a time because it'll reduce the uh, chance of uh, blowing, accidentally blowing the airbag, which would suck. Oh, that would suck so bad. So here we go. We need these wires and these wires and that's it. So I'm gonna terminate these so make them easier to adjust. Wouldn't be the back shop electric without a little bit of electricity. Moment of truth. We got the right one. All right, cool. You can see all I'm doing is connecting the two here. Okay, so for this part, we're gonna reuse these bolts that we took off. These are special bolts that the piece is gonna rotate around. So we'd have to reuse these from the, when we removed them from the fore and aft rails. And we're gonna go from the inside out. You can see that right there. And that piece is gonna go there. And then we're gonna go from the outside in right here. So we're gonna go on the inside on this one and the outside on this one. And if it doesn't line up, this top part pivots pretty well. And we put our nuts on here. Now there's some thread locker remaining on these guys to help keep them in place where we need to go. And you gotta kind of sneak this guy up in here. This one, this cut is gonna go on actually right here. And that's okay, no big deal. So the top one's gonna go this way. So now we're gonna take our nut, get it on here. This one is gonna go from the inside out. This is the 10 by 1.0 fine thread metric nut. We don't want these too tight yet because we've got to fit the cross rails on here. And we're just going to bolt those on. So here we've got the base of the seat and this is the front right here. Okay, so I've got it trying to point up on the screen here for y'all. These three pieces right here, we got to remember that when you're looking at it from this direction, this, these bolt, these holes are offset that way. The two bars go on the front and the one bar goes in the back. Now to maintain the proper seat height, <clears throat> we're gonna hang and we're gonna put them on like this. Now for this, you're gonna need the longer two and a half inch bolts to do this. And the bolt heads need to be on the top so they don't poke through the bottom of the seat. You always wanna remember to use washers to spread out the load. And we're gonna do this right now.
So we got the seat together here. These bolts are all loose. I'm gonna tighten them up mostly. I gotta make sure there's no binding back here in this little guy. And uh, this side should be all right um, with this cutout because I had some binding right in here. Uh, but the rest of it should be okay. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. All four pivot points are tightened down now. We've got here, 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 and here. So the next step is we've got to take the seat base and we need to close it up as close to the bottom of the seat cushion as we can. Now this does two things for us. One is it lowers the center of gravity of the seat. And the second thing that it does is that it lowers the seat height. So lots of different people can sit in it, just tall people. And we didn't bottom out. So that worked out really good. So we removed the green and white wires because we don't need them but the yellow and black wires are to recline the seat. So after we're done with this, the seat should be, the seat cushion should be flat. And so there's a pivot point right here that we need to secure. Otherwise it can be a pinch hazard and we don't really want to do that, right? So I'll push on the top of the seat and it collapses it down. Now what I'm gonna do, and I'm sure I'm gonna get roasted for this, but come up with a better solution and tell me how to do it, leave in the comments, right? Is I'm gonna take bailing wire Vinyl coated though, mind you, and we're gonna wire this to this part of the seat so the front of the seat doesn't lift up. We wanna make sure that we don't inadvertently have someone stick their fingers in it and sit in it. That would be super bad. Um, but this isn't load bearing. All the load is uh, for the front of the cushion is held by this pipe right here. So this is just something that's gonna stop this pipe from, from twisting. And there might be a di different way to do it, but this is the way I chose to do it today. Uh, bailing wire, it's easy, it's quick, and we're gonna do it right now. So, we got this secured, this is on here right, we've got the seat bottomed out, it didn't twist. The last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna put a, uh, the panel on that I made earlier uh, to finish off this side of the seat. Tesla was really trying to gain some efficiency, so what they did is they used a lot of symmetry items. That's why the outside driver's panel fits on the inboard side of the passenger seat. And you saw me make that earlier. So really all I'm doing is taking a sheet metal screw. I'm gonna take my screw, line up the hole. Oh, maybe I need a bigger screw. Yep. I need a bigger screw. So we're gonna go with our good old friend, the self-tapper, because the other ones didn't quite work out so good. All right, here we go. Where's that guy going? He's going nowhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this up and we can tuck it in after we're done adjusting. It's super easy to do that. So thread this under. All right. So there you have it. We'll go put it together now. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to recline the seat back to make sure that we get the seat in a comfortable position. Cause right now it looks like it dump you off the front. It'd be really awkward. So I've got my handy wires off my battery here. Now there's probably a better way to do this, but this is what I've got for right now. I had a switch wired up that was by, um, could switch the polarities, you know, change positive, negative, negative, positive, and so on. Uh, but that broke, so now I'm doing it this way. And obviously you can, you can adjust it to whatever you like. All right, let's give that a shot, shall we? Actually, that's pretty good. Hey, I got it right. I got it right that time. <laughs> yes. 
So there you have it, turning Model 3 seats into office chairs. It was a fun project. I got a lot of feedback from the Model S video. If you wanna check that out, there's a link in the description below. Um, if you got any questions about this build or any of the other builds that I've done, please go ahead and hit me at info at backshopelectric.com or you can leave a comment in the section below. Also, be sure to check out my next project, which is uh, one that I'm super excited about, but I'm gonna put a little bit of teaser on there because I'm not gonna tell you quite what it is just yet. I appreciate y'all stopping by. We'll see you around the back shop. St. Hollywood. <laughs> no way. Hmm. Look at that. Okay. So, uh, we'll put the seat together. All right, so that's the money maker right there. Actually, what am I saying? That's not a T40. T47. Come on, focus. Focus. There it is. There it is. Oh. I spent a lot of hours in here. Stuff like that makes me laugh. All right. And of course I always get it wrong on the first try. <laughs> oh, every time. 50-50 chance. You can you can adjust it to whatever you like. I always do it wrong. <laughs> I even had it set up. I need a bigger screw. Ain't that the way it goes? All right, so here we go with a bigger sheet metal screw. I need an even bigger sheet metal screw. Look at that junk. Oh man, how am I gonna find that now? All right, this should be a size 10. This should be the biggest I need. Try three. We're gonna go with a different screw. Man, this sucks. So we're gonna go with our good old friend, the self-tapper, because the other ones didn't quite work out so good.